I'm very proud of, of that response. But not only the speed of the response, but the courage they demonstrated in entering that building without a moment's hesitation, finding that shooter, apparently hiding, and uh, taking him into custody without shots being fired. Police hailed for their fast response to the deadly shooting at the Capitol Gazette. Arriving on the scene within 60 seconds of the first gunshot, this is we await uh, an appearance by the suspect, Jared Ramos. Uh, that is expected to happen in about an hour. Uh, we'll likely see him from the detention center at which he's being held. He's facing five counts of first degree murder. Let's bring in Steve Rogers, former member of the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force. Uh, Steve, thanks for being here this morning. Horrible occasion to have you, but that comes with your work, right? Um, so when you look at what happened here, 60 second response, that was key in the, in the quickness with which the police responded to this. One of the most effective, efficient responses to a violent crime that I've seen in recent history. This police department uh, is a model for the rest of this country. And that's uh, a tribute to their command and control uh, structure, their police chief, the supervisors on the scene, and their training, which is ultimately uh, important in responding to these incidents. You know, and, and the training is really key as police forces across the country try to figure out how they can improve their response, having these situations happen at our, our schools and our, and our churches. Yes, so police departments now what they have, what they call active shooter training. They actually go into buildings that could be potential targets, room to room, hallway to hallway. So when they arrive on the scene, they know exactly where to go and what to do. It's amazing. 60 second response really likely saved a lot of lives there. As far uh, as the shooter is concerned, there were red flags here. Well, the common denominator in the overwhelming number of these shootings is that there are red flags. Uh, in this case, there were many. Uh, we don't know the motive yet, but it looks like it had something to do with some of the uh, uh, reporters writing uh, in, uh, articles about this individual. But any assault on a journalist is assault on the First Amendment, that precious First Amendment. And we need to protect journalists in this country because once they uh, uh, become victims of violent crimes, we're in real trouble. The acting police chief said uh, it, w it was indeed a planned attack. Um, he used smoke grenades. Uh, when he entered the building, we know. Uh, two law enforcement sources say that uh, Ramos used a shotgun. What is amazing, tying this back to the speed with which police responded to this, is that there was never even any gunfire exchanged with the police and the shooter. No, not at all. Uh, it's indicative to how this police department was, was able to take him in, into custody without more casualties, including their own men and women being uh, shot. It, but it boils down to what we said earlier, that that training is so important on when you, uh, the tactical training, the strategic training, all, all ended in the, what could have been a worse uh, Some of the stories crisis. coming out of this, one of the Gazette reporters, Phil Davis, and, and this is another amazing aspect to this, is that is the live tweeting that was going on, something that we have seen recently as well. Uh, he tweeted, there is nothing more terrifying than hearing multiple people get shot while you're under your desk and then hear the gunman reload. Yeah, I, I can't imagine uh, what went through the minds of these victims, but how courageous were they even being able to tweet information out that perhaps the police or others needed in order to neutralize this individual. The president uh, tweeting uh, or tweeted out thoughts and prayers are with the victims and their families shortly after the shooting took place. Um, what a morning to look back at how horrific that scene must have been for all of those uh, those victims and those people to go through this morning. Speaking and to look back at how this police department saved a lot of lives on that morning. Yeah. Thank you to them. Thank you, Thank Steve. You. All Thank right, you well, uh, Bill? Sandra.